After following this installation guide, you will have installed N8N, Quadrant, Olama and PostgreSQL locally on your PC. Now N8N is the best toolkit for those who want to build REC applications and AI agents without having to write a single line of code. Now while N8N offers a cloud subscription on their website, the application is fully open source and you can install it on your PC for free. But just installing N8N on your PC is not enough. If you want to get serious about building AI agents, you also need a vector database such as Quadrant and of course Olama to run large language models on your PC. But the best way to install all of these components and let them work together is by using an application called Docker. And if you haven't worked with Docker in the past, this might sound a bit intimidating, but trust me, if you follow the exact steps that I'm showing you, you will have N8N and all the other applications installed in the next 10 minutes. So let's get started with the installation of Docker. Now, if you're working on a bit of an old computer, you also have to make sure that you enable SVM in your BIOS, which stands for Secure Virtual Machine. Then if you've done all of this, we're going to continue with the next step, which is the installation of Docker. So just navigate to docker.com and then we're going to download Docker for desktop for our operating system. So just start the installation process and walk through the installation steps. And once we've done this, we can open Docker Desktop, accepts the license agreement. Docker will now propose to create an account, but I'm going to skip this step. Skip this one as well. And then you will see here Docker on your desktop. And if everything is working, this means that we can continue with the next step, which is the installation of Git. So let's minimize a Docker. So I'm just going to open a browser, search for Git, and then navigate to the first a Google result, which is this one. And this should bring you to this website, git-scm.com. And here I'm going to download the Git version for my operating system. So click on downloads. And in this case, I'm going to download it for Windows. So for Git as well, we're going to navigate to the installation process. There are a lot of options, but the default option is always the right one. So just click on Next. And then we're going to download the latest application, which is VS Code. So just search for VS Code. And then download VS Code for your operating system. And once VS Code has been downloaded, I'm going to maximize it. And you probably have a directory somewhere on your machine where you store all of your projects. So I'm going to create such a directory right on my desktop. So new folder projects. And then within VS Code, I'm going to navigate to File, Open Folder, and we're going to open this folder. So select the folder. Then I'm going to trust the authors. And then we're going to navigate on GitHub to the page of the self-hosted AI starter kit, which is this page. You can find the link in the description of this video. Scroll down. And then we're going to copy this command. Open a terminal like this. Just copy the command right here and then press enter in order to clone the GitHub repository. Now in my case, the Git command is not recognized yet. And this means that I have to restart my machine. Okay, so I've just restarted my machine. So let's try again. And now you will see that the Git repository has been downloaded to my machine. So I'm going to navigate back to File, Open Folder. And this time I'm going to open the folder inside this folder, the folder that has just been created. So select this folder and then click on Select Folder. Now this folder contains a few files and the Docker Compose file is the most important one. So I'm going to open this one. And I see here the content of the Docker Compose file. And before running this file, I want to make one small change. So I just navigate to line 51 and somewhere around this line, you should here see the setup of the Postgres database. But by default, this database is not exposed. So I'm going to um, copy from this line 32, the ports, and then navigate to where you see restart on line 54. Place the ports and just make sure that you see it like this. And then I'm going to change the port number because this port is the port that Ulama is already using to 5432, 5432, like this. And now we should be able to run this file. So let's navigate back to the GitHub repository for the installation instructions. Okay, so at this moment we have already executed this command. And then you see here that there are different instructions for different uh, users on different uh, operating systems and with different uh, GPUs. For example, for, G for NVIDIA users, um, there is this command. And then for AMD GPU users on Linux, there is this command. Now, I want to keep this video as straightforward as uh, possible. So we are going to search here for everyone else. And then you're going to copy this command right here. Navigate back to VS Code. Again, open a terminal. 
Make sure that you have saved your Docker Compose file. So save it right like this. And before we are going to execute this command, we are going to make sure that we have Docker open. So just open the Docker application. If you don't see it opening, it's very possible that you see it here in the system tray. So just double click here. So you see that Docker is open right now. Then we're going to navigate back to VS Code, open a new terminal. Again, make sure that your Docker Compose file has been saved. Then paste the command right here and then press enter. And then if all the packages have been installed, we can open uh, Docker. And then you see here the self-hosted AI starter kit. And if you expand it, you see all the different containers that we have just created and which are now running. Except those two, those two should not be running. Okay, so this was already a very good start, but in most cases, you also want to start Docker once you start your computer. So for that, I'm going to navigate to the gear icon. And then you're going to enable start Docker desktop when you sign into your computer, this one, and then click on apply and restart. And in some of my next videos where we are building a retrieval augmented generation application, for example, we are also going to use an embeddings model. And in order to install that, I'm going to navigate to the container that contains Ulama. So just click on this one, then navigate to execute. And on this page, you can install new large language models. So first of all, let's see a list of all the models currently installed. So I'm just going to type Olama list and press enter. And then you see that um, automatically the Llama 3.2 model has already been installed. So that's really good. So let's now continue and also install an embeddings model. So navigate to olama.com. You can find the link in the description. So the Olama application allows you to run large language models locally on your computer. Olama has already been installed as part of the local AI starter kit, but now we just want to extend it with more models. So at this moment, we already have one model installed, which is the Llama 3.2 model. This is a really good model, and it's the model that I'm going to use in most of my videos. But if you want to install, for example, the QN3 model, you can just click on this model. So this model with only 600 million parameters is quite a small model, but it will run on almost any computer. But if you then want to install, for example, this model, this is a really big model and it's not going to run on any of our com consumer computers. So you can just install any model you want. The model that I want to install because it's really important uh, for the next videos in this tutorial series is an embedding model. And it's this one, MXBAI Embed Large. So I just click here, and then you're going to copy this command. Navigate back to Docker, make sure that you're in the Execute tab, paste it, and then press Enter in order to install this model. So once the installation is finalized, I'm going to navigate back to the previous window, Containers. And then we're going to open the N8N application. So just hover over um, this line here, and then click on this icon in order to open the application. This will start your browser. And then the first thing that we have to do is set up our owner account. So I'm just going to provide my credentials here. Click next. And we are now in the N8N application where we can create workflows. So let's click here on create workflow. Then we're going to click here on add first step. And then we're going to click here on on chat message. So this will trigger a flow as soon as a new chat message is being received. So click here. Then let's just navigate back because we want to expand our flow with an action that is then being executed. So click on this one, click on AI, and then we're just gonna go for a basic LLM chain. And this allows us to talk to a large language model. Of course, we also have to add here the model that we want to speak to. So let's click on the plus icon. And here you can then, uh, because it's N8, and you can basically talk with any model. So if you want to talk with OpenAI, you can totally do that. But because this tutorial is focused on building local AI agents, we are, of course, going to work with Ulama. And we're going to choose for the Ulama chat model. Then here you can choose between the models that we have already installed. This is an embedding model, so we cannot really talk to it, but we can talk to Llama 3.2. So let's just try that out. Let's go back. And then click on save. And then let's open a chat in order to talk to our model. You see that our message is being sent to the large language model. And the large language model is now going to speak back to us. Depending on your PC's hardware specs, you're either going to receive messages faster or slower than me. You see here that we receive the text, and this means that everything is working as expected. Now we've successfully installed the N8N toolkit locally on your PC. I hope you're ready to go to the next step. Now one of the most popular use cases with generative AI is building a chatbot that can use your own data. And if you're ready to build this chatbot together with me, we're going to do exactly that in the next video. I hope to see you there.